sound pressure versus sound power. I'm going to talk about this for a couple of minutes because again, it's very important to describing HVAC equipment noise. So we're gonna answer the questions, what's the difference between the two? Why does it matter? And finally, the important point for HVAC equipment is how is it measured? How is sound power measured? Sound pressure relates to what a human will experience because it's pressure waves that push on your eardrum. But it depends on both the source of the sound and the environment around you through which the sound propagates. So it's situation dependent. It's very difficult to compare apples to apples if all you're talking about is a sound pressure level. But it has the tremendous advantage that it can be directly measured with a microphone. Sound power is related only to the source that's emitting the sound. It depends only on the source. It's independent of the path or the situation in which the sound is being made. Therefore, sound power lets you compare apples to apples, different sources of sound, in this case, different pieces of HVAC equipment. It cannot be measured directly, though, like sound pressure can. It has to be calculated. And so, if your goal is to offer a specification for a machine or a unit and to compare alternatives on a level playing field, then sound power is the way to go. And here's a simple way to think of it. You have a light bulb. You turn on that light bulb and it's emitting light into the room. Now, you know that it has a certain brightness, but that brightness can change. However, the amount of power being consumed by that bulb and in fact being sent off by that bulb in visible light does not change. So even though I change conditions in the situation and the brightness changes tremendously, the bulb doesn't know anything about that. It's still putting out the same amount of power. And that's why I can compare bulbs at the store by their power rating. Of course, that's a little bit the old days with incandescent bulbs. It's changing with the newer styles of bulbs, but it's still a good analogy. So, okay, I've just said, hey, sound pressure is easy to measure. You just need a microphone, but sound power, you have to calculate it. So how do we go about doing that? Well. This is how we do it for the AHRI standards. There are three fundamental ways to measure sound power. One is to be in a free field, and the easiest way to do that indoors is to make what they call an anechoic chamber. You can also do it outdoors if it's very quiet and there isn't much wind. Uh, so what you do there is you use microphones, but you have to go around the entire unit. So for example, here is a picture of a very large anechoic chamber measuring sound being from a, from a large power generator. And it's very difficult to see, but there are stands all around the unit holding microphones. And what they're doing is they're measuring the sound coming off in every direction. You add all that sound up, and then you can calculate the sound power. The next way to do it, and often very common for HVAC AHRI 260 measurements, is to use a reverberation chamber, or hard room. And this is completely the opposite of the anechoic chamber because instead of absorbing all the sound, it tries to hold in all the sound. And if you can sample it all in the room as it's coming in from the HVAC unit, you can estimate how much power is filling the room, just like filling a bathtub with water. The third way uses a special probe that's called sound intensity, a sound intensity probe. And it's it um, has the tremendous advantage that it can be done just about anywhere, but it does take a lot of time. It takes special equipment, um, and you have to go around the entire device, whatever's making sound. So it does have some drawbacks. High Performance Environments for Life.